What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chaos, and welcome to a new episode of Take It to the Table. We have a jam packed. When I say jam packed, I really mean jam packed. And obviously, to have that jam packed episode, I gotta have a star started panel. And of course, I have that right here. Of course, to my right, it's none other than Anthony, the man that with the greatest storyline um uh ever told. Anthony, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing all right. I mean, the last time I was on here, I gave Soul Concussion. So it's 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 always fun to come back here to uh, the bullshit with you guys. <laughs> and bullshit we shall, definitely. Um, we gonna be, Like I said, we gonna be, this is right what we're going to be talking about. So let's get strapped in. And obviously, for the first time ever on so... this show, it's no, 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 none other than Shad, who you usually see on the, on the Daily Show, as well as on um, Off the Air wrestling off the air on Tuesday nights after NXT. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. I'm definitely excited. I finally got a seat at the table, and I'm ready to yeah. discuss all that we're going to discuss, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time coming. I know we've been planning this for quite a while, but, uh, but yeah, the most important, time, well, most important thing is you're here. And um, usually I understand, obviously, if you uh, people that's watching, you usually see a – uh, a third member, like it's usually a four four man panel. Um, and if you remember the uh, the aftermath of the previous episode, you must be wondering who where that person is. Well, uh, the, for the people that haven't that didn't see that, um, this was the aftermath at the end when uh, Anthony obviously dropped that uh, um, awesome uh, storyline about CM Punk, and this is what he basically made one person in particular on that show do. Let's check it out. Uh, yeah, this has been taken to the table. I have been your host, Chaos. He has been Anthony. Down below has been Clark. Down there has been Broken Soul. Until next time, guys. Peace. Uh, <laughs> take a bump. Why, Anthony? Why? Never not funny. <laughs> Never not funny. Gosh. And, and as, as legend has it, apparently he's still there on the floor. So we just go, you know, we just see if he's still alive. Uh, Soul, are you still, are you, are you, are you there? Oh, that's refreshing. Just making a drink. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. He's still alive. He's still, you know, still. Hopefully, he's not as concussed as he was after after that. Uh, how you doing today, Saul? Are you, you good? <laughs> they got what bars in the it? underworld. What year is it? Is it 2026 already? Oh, oh, hey guys. No, no, no. It's not 2026, but you know, it's um. I mean, I've been, I've, been, I've been down here so long that my whole set's changed as well. This is cool. That is true, actually. Yeah, that, that is, that's, that's a fair point. Yeah, new they just changed new... it around them. <laughs> they didn't bother helping him up. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's what I'm saying. They just walked over him. And was... <laughs> and I literally just remember a cocktail shaker rolled with me, bought tequila, cloudy lemonade, and I've just been making drinks. Oh. Fair dues, fair dues. I'm surprised yeah. they didn't get taken either. But yeah, <laughs> welcome <laughs> back, Soul. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Wait, who's this guy? We got new people oh. already. For God's sake, you! I've been down here for two weeks with my cocktail maker, and what happens? I get replaced already. God's sake, man! Quick to get rid of me. It was, a backup, it was a backup plan. It's all good. But yeah, Shad is still part of the table, and so are you, Soul. The Soul, that you kept your seat warm for you, so it's all good. How you doing? You good? Very well, as always. You know, um, wrestling world's been a bit fun for the last couple of weeks, shall we say? It's been a bit of a who has understatement. Understatement, definitely. Um, so yeah. Uh, we like I said, we got a start jam packed episode. We are going to be obviously talking about as of this recording, um, on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, it's uh, it's basically the Tuesday Night Wars, it's uh, AEW versus WWE. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, of no fault of their own, obviously, AEW had to move to Tuesdays, um, for this Tuesday only. And then, you know, obviously, WWE done, they basically stuffed their supposed developmental brand with all stars in there and um, we just obviously want to critique that and see what you know what's what's everyone's thoughts on that um as well as obviously the rated r superstar sorry adam copeland has debuted on aw since the last since our last episode so obviously um and obviously jade cargill has moved over to wwe she signed a multi-year deal so we just obviously wanted to i wanted to pick everyone's brains to see what you know what initial matches they would like to see any dream matches they would like to see in their respective new con companies. Um, also, uh, M MJF and Adam Adam Cole, uh, with Adam Cole obviously set to be injured out and out for a, um, for a significant amount of time. Obviously, we also want to pick you guys' brains about obviously what how would they further the storylines and um, and the situation with the ROH tag team titles. 
Um, and um, also, uh, since everyone's moving everywhere, you know, let's see what, of course, this man could possibly be doing in in either company. And of course, there we go. We're, we're ready. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I wish I had the memo. I got his. I have one of his shirts somewhere. In my oh, oh, I have his. I have a stupid jersey thing. You know how oh, man. jersey on pro wrestling tees. I have that in a crate somewhere, so I ain't putting that shit on. In all oh. fairness, so you wouldn't even be on this show if it wasn't for Punk, because he's the one that got you in the wrestling. So, just saying. Burn. <laughs> They got you there. Lies. You. Lies. <laughs> I will not have such lies and despicable. I will go back down on this floor if you keep speaking lies, man. No, 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 no. no, no. You stay stay, stay here for the next man. hour at least. Let's stay here at least. We got. We need you here for for now. Just wait until 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 afterwards, and then you can be concussed and whatever. I know that. Anyway, um. So yeah, obviously, get yourself strapped in. Grab some popcorn. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, though. And of course, without further ado, let us take it to the table. <laughs> Oh, love it. It gives, gives me goosebumps every time. All right. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> we have to for a dramatic show because I, I think all hell's going to break loose on this one. Or something like that. You don't have to bring out the goddamn 12 piece orchestra, man. Get just, just <laughs> classic. Like, it's you know, the Avengers go- Endgame moment. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Avengers Endgame. It's, 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 yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah, it's, right. more, it's, okay. more it's more than Flash. It's more than Flash. No. Anyway, we, we, we're very enough. All right, cool. Tuesday. Next Tuesday, as of this recording, a few days from here, um, uh, obviously that is usually the 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 day for NXT. Um, and so far, it's, you know, it's it's fair to say it's quite it's quite liked um, of, of, amongst fans. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a far cry away from NXT 2.0 um, and all the multicolored stuff and you know all the Sesame Street gimmicks and all that stuff. Um, and it's getting yeah, it's getting pretty good. Obviously now. Um, uh, I'm not. You might have to co- confirm with this one for me, Anthony. I'm, I know there's something something's happening on Wednesday uh, for them to be moving over to ch- for AEW. I should yes. say that's happening. Um, is it is it an NFL game? What's what's happening? No, with, you know? it's uh, the baseball playoffs. Matter of fact, baseball. I'm not a hundred percent certain because I gotta check. It might be my Phillies. That might be the game that bumps them. But I'm not. I'm not sure. I know they're on TBS, but I'm not sure if it's if it's that day or not. Got it. Cool. Fair dues, fair dues. Um, so yeah, of course. Um, so they have they move be moved a day early, but obviously it's in the same, I think it's around the same time slot as NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've obviously AEW has announced its title Tuesday. Currently, they have um four matches announced um for next um for, for that for that show. And um one of them is uh Ray Phoenix versus John Moxley for the IC title. Um sorry, IT title, not an IC title. <laughs> um uh, what else oh, is there? So, what else is there? The, uh, um, You've got, uh, uh, I've got the matches here, so I'll take over. I'll tag hey, anybody. Oh, okay. So, we've got Jay White as well versus Hangman Page. We've also got Powerless Hobbs versus Jericho. We've got Swerve Strickland versus Brian Danielson for a number one contender for the TNT Championship. Great. We've got Soraya and Hikaru Shida for the AEW Women's Championship and making his in ring debut for AEW, the rated R superstar Adam Copeland versus yes. Luchasaurus with Christian Cage at ringside. You have it. So yeah, this a uh, pretty stacked show. They want to make sure they can get get every ounce of of uh, ratings out of this. But then, um, as soon as that happened, WWE basically said, "Hold my beer," and then they announced um, on their end that uh, Cody Rhodes, for some reason, is making his uh, making a major announcement. <laughs> on- <laughs> that that is the most telegraphed of. Of the traitor, the, FUs <laughs> the that they irony, could possibly put on there. <laughs> like it's literally of, of any people to be making a major announcement, that's the one yes. you do it with 100%. Um, John Cena is going to be in uh Carmel, mm-hmm. Carmelo Hayes's corner, while um, Paul Heyman is all of a sudden best friends with Bryce Maker. It is it, all right, cool. Um, Oscar is going to be facing Roxanne Perez as well. Um, great match. And now that they're, they're, <laughs> I mean, I, I, obviously there are reports that a certain dead man may also be in the at the PC that week. Oh my God, Anthony, are you telling me we're going to get Undertaker versus Von Wagner? Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely, because he's got heart. <laughs> definitely, he's got heart. Yeah, he's so got heart. I got the shards. Cool. <laughs> 
So, yeah, it's quite evident that, you know, they do not like the fact that, you know, that AEW is starting to step on their turf and they have mm-hmm. pretty much done all guns blazing. Um, considering it's, you know, considering the fact they've always thought that, you know, um, AEW was secondary, you know, you, you mm-hmm. know, Triple H made digs about AEW in Cody Rose's um, documentary. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, Vince, infamously said on one of them the quarterly pre- um, conferences that you know over there is all about blood and guts and we don't do that mm-hmm. kind of stuff AEW is obviously named one of their shows blood and guts um yeah so, so it's like as much as they act like they don't care they're very they're, they're very you know eager to definitely you know make sure they outdraw um mm-hmm. uh AEW at any given time i mean not even that obviously they they do counter programming on PLEs as well. Most of the time, you know, wherever I think it was, what was it? Was it all out that um, uh, when that there was a battleground at the same time, wasn't it? Yep. Correct. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, and 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 this week, first line, we'll be competing and, with collision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And yeah. Last, so, and last week too, they had a collision on the same day as um the NXT. No Mercy and No Mercy yeah. was also the same weekend as uh Wrestle Dream. Dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's clearly you know they as much as they don't really you know they they kind of act like you know they don't really care about AEW. It's fair to say they pretty much they still pretty much do. Um, and for them to go this far out to to you know um to try and outdraw them. Um, so yeah, my question to you guys is um do you, do you do you do you agree with this kind of um this kind of cop uh, cop programming like this you know the. Do you, are you happy that you know the the Wednesday night wars are back? Like, what? Well, in fact, let me let me let me ask you this: Like, what was it like when the actual Wednesday night wars happened at the time? Would would like would, did you like it at the time and whatnot? Um, yes, yeah, so let's uh, let's start with Anthony. What's what 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 did you? Uh, what's your what's your mind about this? What, what's well, your thoughts? My, my initial thoughts with the Wednesday night war, or if you want to want to call it that, it was always a developmental territory going against the flagship show of, of the of the competition. So I always viewed it in that direction. Like I, I thought, okay, let's see. They're in the bigger arena, the fire, the fireworks, everything, their major stars are on there. And it's against a developmental. So like realistically, I always kind of felt it that way. From a business standpoint, from WWE, as much as publicly they're gonna go, ah, they're not a threat, whatever. Of course, they're going to say that publicly. They're the number one company. They're not going to give credence or credibility to AEW going, we're afraid of any in, any smart company is paying attention to all competition, not just wrestling, all competition. UFC was competition to them before the merger. Everything was competition. They TNA, Impact, they're keeping their eyes on everything. They have to. It's a smart business. You have to. Because there are talent in all of those companies that could be a future star in your company. You're going to keep an eye on them. You're going to see what they're doing. So as far as this Tuesday, I kind of view it as, okay, I know AEW has to go to Tuesday. They have no choice. I get it. But at the same point, I get why WWE would be stacking the deck because they're not going to lose again to AEW. They're like, okay, you're coming to our territory. We already, we seceded Wednesday to you. We're not giving you Tuesday. So (laughs) we're going to stack the deck. But the other thing to keep in mind is they're not just competing with AEW on Tuesday night. They're competing with the program that's bumping AEW with, with the baseball playoffs too. So you're competing against that. It's a different game than, you know, the got them bumped but i'm pretty sure there is a game on tuesday if i'm not mistaken so they're they're competing against all of that and all other programming too so Mm -hmm. you got to keep that in mind when you when when wwe books these things so that's my take on that yeah there's no that's 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 understandable uh what about you so what's your thoughts on this if you're able to talk (laughs) (laughs) just give me my credit on god (laughs) <laughs> do, you want to comment about the, do you want me to comment about the Wednesday Night Wars back in the day as well, or do you want me to just go straight into this? Yeah, whatever is on your mind regarding it, you could do both. It's all good. Oh, my mind, so let's uh, let's try and separate everything right now. So I mean, I remember the Wednesday Night Wars back in the day. I, honestly, I only remember really one site because back in then days, I only watched AEW. Like I knew NXT existed, but I didn't watch it. 
I didn't really care. I didn't really care for it, but I knew it existed. I remember when Dynamite would finish on all of the Thursdays here is when the ratings would come out. And it was a bit exciting because I feel like at that time, AEW was still very fresh. I wanted to see that people cared for it and wanted to do it well. And I don't know, I was excited about it as well, seeing the ratings and seeing AEW just smash NXT in a sort of a, you know, hit the gritty and laugh at them competition kind of way. It's like, Haha, you're failing. Good on you. And then when they got bumped, there was kind of like a nice thing. But it was a nice week period. I feel like it is a piece of wrestling history. Shouldn't have lasted too long. And his little self contained thing, that's fine. Now, with moving to Tuesdays, it's, you know, isn't like Anthony's just said there, they're not just competing with each other, they're competing with, you know, baseball and other television programs. Mm-hmm. And people also, you know, people might have set their Wednesdays aside to watch Dynamite and now they can't. They might have work and they might not be able to watch it. Like, I can't watch Dynamite Live because, you know, I've got work, so I can't do that. So I, that's it for me. And um, there might also be other situations that people, you know, are just busy or something like that. I may not, or they might want to tape it, DVR it, and then watch it later. And that's the thing that's not really recorded in these live ratings that probably television companies care about as well. That's another factor we don't take into an account. What I'll say about the cards is, you know, AW's done a good, I think AW's done very well with the cards. You know, they could have maybe, people would say, oh, it's Title Tuesday, put more titles on, but I feel like you need to have a balance because, you know, put on the big stars and people will come and see that. But with, with NXT, is I have a problem is, why, they're doing this now obviously because AW came into their turf, but they never really did it during the whole Wednesday Night Wars, you know, you kind of had some people come in, but you never had people like Cena come in or like Asuka come in and like people having like Cody Rhodes doing a championship or like, sorry, doing an announcement or like Seth Rollins coming down for his championship and all that. And I know people were in different uh, situations back then, but I feel like now you need to remember it's like AW stars on the Tuesday show will still be there the next week. Cena's not going to be there next week. Neither is Paul Heyman probably. Cody Rose may come down and do one thing or another, or Asuka may come down there and do another. Now, yes, of course, Beth Glitch has come down there and done amazing things, but you need to remember, it's like, this won't be a weekly occurrence. You're not going to come to NXT and see those guys there weekly. You'll maybe see them on an off chance of three times a month. Now, what I feel like the ratings will be like, there'll probably be a lot of channel flipping as well. Wrestling fans will be flipping through as well to see what the competition is doing, what's on 100%. a certain time. be like, oh, at uh, whatever time it goes on, like this time it's this match and now AEW's got this match coming on as well. So again, it's just the whole tribalism thing with wrestling. Like at the end of the day, wrestling's doing well. That's what we are fans of. I'm not like a fan of like the company in itself. Like I know that's a weird thing to say because I have free TNT type or sorry, free AW titles behind me. So it's a bit, eh. <laughs> you <laughs> have think, two and a third on order probably. Well, if they release, if they release me, you AEW show you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got he's got the um the uh acclaimed the trio one. Don't, don't, don't. Order. nah i gotta see a 24 7 title to make you prove oh my it, man. God. i'm messing with you bro. <laughs> but no um another thing i'll touch on as well what i feel like cody's gonna announce i feel like he's gonna announce the dusty road classic i i okay. i agree with you so i think he's gonna announce it and i think he's gonna announce he's gonna be in it oh with who drew mcintyre or? probably jay would be my guess because it would no, be a he, pay-per-view he's reuniting legacy he's bringing back ted dibiase jr that's gonna be problem that's gonna be a problem because he has, he has legal problems that man need to be yeah, that man available. that man that man is yeah that yeah, dude's a scumbag man happen. give that money back to the people in mississippi it, you crook realistically th- this is a win-win for fans what they're doing this is this is the best stuff because the competition creates this must-see environment in wrestling. We win on this. Yeah. At the end of the day, you really don't have to choose. You want to watch them both? DVR one and watch the other? Or DVR both of them? Watch the baseball playoffs and then watch them both back-to-back? Whatever. There are so many options now to watch content. You, you would hope so. You would you would hope that, but you just know. It's like, that's why I oh, say no, it'll it'll be, it, it, or whatnot. Like, whoever loses... The the, the 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 winning fans are just gonna be just, just shoving it down. It's just chaos. I literally said on the daily the other day. I said the same thing. People should be happy for Edge wanting to end these things on his terms. And one yeah. of the comments was, "Well, this was clearly an AEW mark that made the comment." I'm going. I watched them all. I said you could watch them all. You don't have to choose. Like, I, you know. And it's weird because those same people are the same ones that actually probably do watch both of them. But it's just oh yeah, like, they just want to just create some some drama. It's, people are weird. It's, it's, hey, it's, hey, the people that hate wrestling the most are wrestling fans. 
<laughs> that, that is that is true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I will mean, share some insight as well. Obviously, I've interviewed a lot of great talent. And, you know, when we're done recording, we just chat the shit afterwards. And a lot of them hate the tribalism within wrestling fans because they, they all want to do well. Like, you know, people backstage are like friends with people in the other company. They can't just like, you know, it's not like, you know, all quiet in the Western Front. We've got M1 Grands pointed at one another, like, get ready. They're coming over the trenches and shooting them all. It's like, no, come on. They're all friends. They're all buddies. They're all wanting to see everyone do well. I mean, some of them are married to one another, for God's sake. It's not like they get divorced because of you won the 24-7 championship and I was stuck with the BTE title. It's like, boo. <laughs> Financially, it gives them the most opportunity to make money, too. There are so many companies for them to make money in now, so they're not really going to burn bridges. It's a win for them. It's a win for the fans. It's a win for the business as a whole. When there's competition, it brings out the best in all the companies. Nobody yeah. should be sitting there going, I want WWE to drive them out of business. No, I want AEW to drive WWE out of business. You're an idiot if you think either one of those is a good idea. And as much I, as I agree. So, and as yeah. much as people complain about WWE, the evil empire, they go down, so does the industry, because yeah. that is the company that is keeping True. everything afloat. Outside the wrestling bubble, nobody knows what AEW is or what impact is. WWE is such an established brand. It's like Kleenex. Non-tissue brands are all called Kleenex because that's what people know. So when you hear professional wrestling, the thought everyone goes, oh, WWE or WWF. Like that's it's it's the truth. Unfortunately, yeah. that's that's the way it is. I must no, say, no. I, I, thought, I thought I was still concussed there because I thought I had Durex. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. Durag Vince was a missed opportunity not to make a figure of that. I don't know how that didn't happen. <laughs> I, I, go ahead, go ahead, I, I gotta say, I um I'm thoroughly excited for Tuesday. As soon as obviously I do the review shows uh wrestling off air for NXT, and I've been watching every single NXT episode since 2.0 till now. Y'all oh, can people people can call me sorry, crazy or not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but obviously yeah, the Nickelodeon years, man. I mean, I was a Disney Channel kid, man. I, I, I like all that corny comedy to an extent. But <laughs> but in all seriousness, I, I, I think competition draws for you to produce the best product. And, I mean, we I'm assuming we all around the same age bracket. We was there during the Monday Night Wars, during Raw and Nitro between WWE and WCW. What the fuck? And- I'm not that old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's a kind of one. Is the youngest oh, oh. one of the of the group. I'm I'm clearly the oldest, but yes, I, I'm I'm a veteran of those wars. Yes, yeah. continue. I'm, uh, <laughs> besides you, what were those times? Were they tough? Were they hard? What was but, cable? What what, what was what but, was? Bad? But um, but but to the point. Uh, I, I feel like it's gonna really push both of them. And I, the thing is, this with WWE and uh, AEW, their products are so different where i feel the viewers who watch it are gonna appreciate it i think tony played a smart move on how he set that card next tuesday because that's a very strong card that's like a borderline aw pay-per-view on cable television next week and with wwe's point you're putting a lot of premier people on the third brand on the developmental Mm -hmm. brand and that's gonna add viewers to it my hope and i i would assume the idea of kind of how NXT is booking lately is you're going to see reoccurrences this happen very often. I mean, Becky Lynch is probably the most popular women's wrestler on their entire brand, and she's your NXT women's champion. You've had Seth have a title match there. You know, you've had Dolph Ziggler been a champ prior to it. Obviously, he's not with the WWE anymore. But you've seen an influx of main roster people being on the show where I feel like they're giving an opportunity to kind of get people to draw on to the product more and hopefully keep their eyes to keep watching it with a lot of these younger stars and also get reps and storylines with these younger stars. Cause it being developmental, I really do think that they're developing it to create stars so they can get these people to the main roster. I mean, you see a Carmelo Hayes, a Braun breaker, Tiffany Stratton, like she's a person that I think is going to probably be on the main roster a lot sooner yeah. than later. And her having a 
extremely great match with Becky on a pay-per-view. People know who she is now, you know? Dragon Lee coming to Raw. Like, I, I like, I wish they would not insult our intelligence where they would just be like, this whole roster split or, you know, doesn't exist anymore and kind of just let people free range and come there. But it, it's beneficial. So I, I think hopefully that's the point. I know that you said that it may be a point where they're going to put Cena, all these people here, and then no one's going to watch it for the next time. I hope that isn't too much of the case. I hope people will be like, you know, I like seeing Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams or Carmelo Hayes versus Braun Baker happen. Let me keep watching this and see what goes oh, yeah. on with it. Yeah. No, I, 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 go, go, Chaos, go. I'm sorry. One thing to keep in mind that really a lot of people are not bringing up. Again, yeah, WWE signed a new TV deal for SmackDown. Raw and NXT, they still not have not signed True. that TV deal yet. Yeah. So they're still yeah. floating that. So the last thing you want to do is to lose a ratings battle against AEW when you're trying to sell this as another program on another network, whether USA resigns it, which I still think they're going to. I just oh, don't yeah. think they've worked that out because Raw is the flagship show. So I think they're they're still working that out. That's why they haven't announced it. That's my guess. But I think it's going to be a package deal. You don't want NXT to lose here. And they didn't lose this week. And they didn't have Cena or Wida or or uh, Taker or Asuka or any of these people or Cody on this week. But they still beat them. And AEW had Edge on there. So, you know, yeah. it's interesting. I mean, and- it's uh, and I think they played it. I think it, the timing's perfect because I don't think that uh, like if it was still under the the multicolored brand or like the Nickelodeon show and they try yes. to do all this kind of stuff, it probably wouldn't be as much interest in it. But no. the fact that they've actually started from scratch, it kind of did a soft reset, if you will, and it's been arguably arguably good every like since then. Now the intrigue is there, and because yeah, I agree. I don't to be fair, I don't watch NXT, but I see the highlights and like. I'm like, okay, yeah, they, 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 they're, they're pulling it off nicely. So. They've hit a good median between what was black and gold and what it's was the 2.0. Yeah, it's definitely a hybrid. with Because one benefit is them just taking a lot of the people from the NXT uh, UK brand and bringing them on to over here, having like a, you know, Tyler Bate, uh, Noam Dar, you know, B Priestley, all of these people on there and kind of mixing them and having them – with a lot of screen time experience and in-ring experience and working with, you know, people who are virtually brand new to the, you know, the world of professional wrestling being whatever division one football player, gymnast or whatever it may be. And I think they've kind of gutted out a lot of the over influx, all the super green talent, whether it be within promo and wrestling and, keeping the good ones <laughs> and then mm-hmm. keeping the people who are good within their own time frame. So uh, yeah, I, I think that definitely is a solid thing, but it's going to be interesting. I don't, I don't really trip about ratings that much, but they always are kind of interesting and fun to look at. Yeah, of course. And it, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Cause I'm genuinely like stoked for both shows. Oh, yeah. Like a W like TK stacked a really, good card like swerve and danielson is a match that w- <laughs> i'm gonna have to pause nxt just to watch <laughs> that match because those are two of my favorite professional wrestlers in the entire swerve world like that, that match against page sublime it was a it was a very it was one of my favorite matches <sighs> of i mean it, it also great. just means we're gonna get more of prince nana dancing so i mean that's okay. oh yeah <laughs> <of course. laughs> and, then, and then obviously edge or adam copeland or whatever he wants to be called now legend uh <laughs> i want to see what keeps happening because as much you know the, i'm not gonna go too much on the views of people knocking on them like oh 800 000 views edge and christian what they did on wednesday was one of my favorite like just in ring segments in the entire year, man. Like, absolutely, absolutely shot. And I think they said, I saw something earlier that the number on, I guess, YouTube or social media or whatever for that moment is almost two million views. I think it was like two and a half I saw earlier. Yeah. And it's like, you, you got to look at that too. It's not just the TV ratings, it's it's the views on social media. Like, yeah. when The Rock yeah. came in, it was 150 million views 
of his return. Like it, you got to pay attention to that stuff too. Yeah, that, that's what fans usually care about these days. They don't really care mm-hmm. about how many views it was on, on like how many millions of viewers watched yeah. it on TV. It's all about how many clicks that mm-hmm. got, and then that's what they that's what they promote. So, yeah, um, and so it, it's still let's 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 put it this way. Um, Adam Copeland's debut on Dynamite did way better than when he showed up on that random episode of NXT after he won the Rumble. He was he did not draw at <laughs> so like I, to say that I, he, I gotta be honest with you, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. He showed yeah, up. I forgot he, about he, this. He was gonna <laughs> I'm like, sure I watched it. I just don't remember it. Yeah, it was, it was, oh yeah. my goodness, you're right. Wow, I did forget <laughs> about that. Time. Where he tried to tease that he was gonna what title well, am I cash gonna... in his rumble win? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it like it, oh it was a dud. Absolutely dud. So he is he is working for for, for AEW. I think I think he's a good get for AEW. Is mm-hmm. I think is 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 a rightful person to um to fill in a certain hole that a certain person has left. Um, so, uh, so yeah, which will obviously so, go. So, so they went from straight edge to just edge is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, a, that's, a, that's, that's a bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, let's write that down. We can use it for your next track. <laughs> straight edge to edge. I like that. That was good. <laughs> now he's already stolen it now. He's, he's going to put it in his next one. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's all good. But, um, but fair play. So yeah, whilst we're obviously talking about, um, Edge, um, uh, obviously, he's, he made his debut on Wrestle Dream. He's obviously had that awesome segment with um, with Christian Cage, which kind of kind of reminded me also a little bit of when um, uh, when it was our, um, Randy Orton and Edge before he RKO'd him. You remember that? Yeah, they mm-hmm. very had like that that kind of element, which was an awesome segment. That was just as good as well. Um, obviously, without this, without the concerto and no one, his wife not getting RKO'd. Hopefully, hopefully Christian Cage will be maybe here with our prettier. Is she still? Is she signed on the on the, on the WWE? Still? Uh, I'm not Sweet. sure. Nah, I mean, she's they, not. They, they, they let her do the voice thing for his. Yeah. Answer, so I, I think she might be, or she might have something to do with him, but or she might be. She might be like on a Legends deal. She, she was probably under a Legends, and I, okay. According to, according to Edge, WWE. Apparently, there's no bad blood there. They're very happy for him. They congratulated yeah. him, like, after it. So there's no bad blood there. I do think, though, like, recording You Think You Know Me is completely different than, yeah, we'll let you go on there. That's that's a different story. So, mm. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have not wanted to. You might have not wanted to bleak that information though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The reason I'm asking, I just really want to see her get, get the prettier. I don't know why I'm very You, you, I'm, you, you almost want to wow. You almost wonder whether or not they trade it. Okay, we'll let Beth say that, but you let us have Regal say War Games. <laughs> like that, you almost traded it in advance. Fair, fair, fair trade, fair trade. Triple H pulling up some kind of Geneva Convention kind of contract. Like this is the, how we get peace. Between it's because I, I really would not want to see Beth wrestle on AEW. No, just no, their I, women's I, division I, is booked so bad. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. But even if it was booked well, I, 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 I guess I'm maybe like her and Statlander it. would be the only like cool match. But I would rather see her like wrestle like Rhea or yeah. Bianca or. I mean, Chad, you're giving her better booking than Chaos getting fucking kicked over by two of Edge's former mates, fucking Randy and then Christian is like, yeah, you just go to each company, just get your ass kicked. To, to me, that <laughs> really works if Christian has a female for her. For her to go up against, like for her to just take Christian's move, it's I don't know. You get into that territory, like when Jericho beat up Brit. You know, there was that controversy that you know the shirt with yeah. the black eye. Like I don't know if they want to go that, and and it would I don't. And plus, they already did Beth with the whole Orton thing, yeah. so I don't know if you really want to go. Yeah, I guess not, yeah. that. I think you can kind of keep it just Edge and Christian personally, but. Yeah. It's 2023. <laughs> Soon to be yeah. So, so what you're saying is we, we can get another live sex celebration on Dynamite? Oh, gosh. Oh, my god! Lita, I believe, no, is the highest rated sex you know, on, on WWE TV. It is still crazy the thing is, I don't think yeah, I don't think Lita is signed on the WWE. No, I think she <laughs> is. Well, she, she has appeared on the, the, um, the Treasure show, so I think she might be under something. Yeah, she's okay. under something. No, I just no, haven't, no, I haven't seen no, her no, since the... I thought something better. Christian Cage and Nick Wayne's match. 
Oh, yeah, Christian. Dude. That's insane, yeah, but, bro. Yeah, but <laughs> that that is he, wild. Yeah, but who does he get out with that? Because Nick's already with him. Like it, not, it would only make sense if if him and Nick weren't a, a, a group. It's not like, dude, I'm taking you and your mom. Yeah, now. but like, keep, in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind. Now, keep in mind that obviously Edge has warned him that Nick and Luchasaurus will turn on you. So, like, obviously Christian could be like, "All right, fuck you guys. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna." Fuck your mom. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat on hey, you. Yo, that's, you cheat on me. <laughs> that's crazy. That's some like imagine if the segment super creepy is like only if only if Russo and Vince Russo and have you can beef. See where this segment went yeah, completely off the rails. Like you could literally see the point where this just went completely <laughs> chaos. <laughs> no you, guys, have you guys seen the Will Ferrell like TV show where he's like he's like, he's like a Ric Flair knockoff and he's just Talking to somebody, oh, yeah. let the boy watch, let him watch, <laughs> it'll make him a man. And then look to source and just stand. Hey, like, hey, Shad, welcome to take it to the table. This is, I, I, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is hilarious. This is definitely a different dynamic. I like it. Oh, it is. 100%. That it's, it is. It's, it's, it's like it's uncut cocaine over here. That's what it is, man. It's, it's clean. So, so moving good. away from I go lot of I'm, now I'm kind of I know it's not gonna happen, but a, a love angle between Christian and Nick Wayne's mom would kind of yeah, be, be it actually good. would like kind of be intriguing. Wait, wait, here's the thing. It don't gotta be like him and Lita like edge wait. and Lita like in the middle of the ring but wait let me throw this out I'm, I gotta throw this out because Tony likes to spend money for, for, for music, I almost want him to pay for somebody to do a Stacy's mom song with Nick Wayne's mom. <laughs> is the, oh, is my the... God. Gosh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um... <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, let's get back on track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's stop, let's stop talking yeah, about still... Nick Wayne's mom getting banged in the ring. <laughs> 2023, like Shad said, it's 2023. Um, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, obviously, like I said, since we're talking on, about Adam Adam Copeland, um, obviously he is the new debutant for for AEW, and of course, um, on the other side, Jade Cargill, prim, arguably one of AEW's biggest stars, has obviously moved over to Connecticut, um, and uh, she is scheduled to debut at some point. Um, mm-hmm. So, obviously, with that now, obviously, it's pretty much like a straight swap, call it, call it if you will. Essentially, uh, yeah. Essentially, yeah. You know, in terms of star power, I would say arguably it is. Um, what off the bat, you know, obviously, we get an Edge versus Luchasaurus. I, I think it's argued. I think it's, it's fair to say that's not everyone. That's not on everyone's mind, you know, initially. But that, after that was this, on nobody's dream card list. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I think it's fair to say that. I don't, yeah, yeah I, don't think I, I really want him to fight Luchasaurus. Because yeah. <laughs> you know, when I saw Edge come back from a forced retirement, my thought was, I want to see him face a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm disappointed Marco Stunt's not in the company now, so I can see him take a spear and go flying. Oh, he would sell that beautifully. Yeah, yeah that's true, though. He would sell it would that look beautifully. more like a pound. That man will become, like, turn into a laptop when you close it, man. He, like, his body will <laughs> fold. It would, it would look like when Adam Cole got pounced by Keith Lee and he went in the crowd. That's what <laughs> it would look like. I'm cool with that. And then, like, you just see his boots just leaving the ring. You just, like, you just get boots. That's his retirement. That's his retirement. Marco, 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 Marco Stunt, in a lot of ways, is, like, a Spike Dudley. Like, he's oh, yeah, very much a Spike Dudley where he's the guy you want to see take a bump. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Darby yeah. does it, but Darby does it in a way that you're like, this guy's not going to be walking in 10 years if he keeps this yeah. up. Like, and it's a shame, but like, and I know I got crap for it when I said this on the daily because people were like, that's not right. I'm like, listen, I'm not wishing ill on him. I'm just stating a fact. The way the reality of the human body (laughs) is he's risking it all. He doesn't care. The the stuff he was taking at Wrestle Dream was, I'm like, it was awkward watching it. You're like, dude, are you in a race with Jeff Hardy to see which one and you can't walk? Because (laughs) I, I don't understand. Because you're more reckless than Jeff ever was, and that's a, that's a hard thing. That's yes. a hard feat to, to beat. Just, it's just crazy. Got, just got like ten, twenty years ahead of you, and you're like, <laughs> no, I can catch you. <laughs> that's crazy. I can get in a chair quicker than you. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, obviously, just like I said, fair to say that obviously everyone's looking to see Adam Cole versus Luchasaurus. Off the top of your head, what are the you know the initial matches you would like to, or the matches you can't wait to see or would love to see for for, for both uh, Jade Cargill and uh, Adam Cole? I'll just I'll go with you, Shad, if you can, if um, uh, since you're the newbie here. Is there anything uh, off the bat you want to do? First crack. So for I'll start with uh Mr. Adam Copeland. I mean, there's a ton of matches, man. I would love to see him obviously off the bat. We can put him versus like Kenny Omega over there. Uh, but I really want to see him a swerve, man. I feel like the mm. psychology of that match and like I, just the psychology of the in ring of the match, as well as like if they were to do a feud, could be so good. I feel Swerve is like criminally underrated at what he does. Like I've I, he truthfully to me, like maybe besides like Christian and Max, like I think he's the best heel on that roster. And I think he's just I feel like he's not even scratched the surface of the potential that he could do. So I feel like a feud with Edge could really, you know, now that they're starting to put a little bit of momentum on his stock, I feel like that could be a great one. Um Man, there's so many fresh matches that he could have over there. It's That's crazy. what I'm saying. It is a brother I mean, for sure, 100. Yeah, percent Yeah, you have that. Obviously, you know, if him and Christian decide to do the tag team stuff, them versus FTR is a dream match. I do feel a lot of people. I, I, I would. I do feel like if Edge and Christian do end up being a tag team, I feel like that would be more interesting than when they try to do the thing with the Hardys. But I think the reason I feel that way is because... Because they seen... both can wrestle, actually. <laughs> yeah, they just so as well. And uh, we've seen the, the Hardy return. The, obviously, at WrestleMania, that was like a huge pop mm-hmm. in return. And since then, yeah. I think maybe that's why. Because we haven't seen Edge and Christian tag team. I think it would be very refreshing to see. I, the, the... I think the way... That, the, uh, ideally, I think the way they may play it, and this is just a guess, he's going to he's gonna feud with Christian the start. Yeah. And he's going to bookend it, tagging with him. I th- I think that's how his AEW career is going to go. I think he's yeah. going to feud with him, and they're going to tag. I think that's I think they're going to retire together. That's my guess. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. What about you, So What's uh, what's your what's your ideal? What's the first ma- ideal match you want to see? I can't wait for them to announce for Adam so, Copeland. So I really thought about this Anford Dreams. Though. Like I actually came up with a list. So I actually prepared. Very well. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you, did, you, you put that list together on the floor, did you? Huh? Yeah, it was hard. I mean, the phone's a bit of an angle, so I was trying to do research. It was a bit iffy, you know, fun as it is. But I got for so for Adam Cole, I got three singles, two tags, and a trio. So right. for the singles, I want to see you know Swerve's a very good choice as well. But for me, I want to see him against Andrade. I would really like to see Ooh, how God. that would go, especially with Andrade's, you know fake kick and elbow moves you can kind of incorporate oh, his, his neck and like oh is that gonna be like the devastating move to take him out finally another person i want to see is just because the neck puns roderick strong because i think that'd be very, <laughs> very funny the messiah the oh. backbreaker <laughs> Real comedy but with that, i think that'd be absolutely hilarious and another one i think is a bit of a wild card but i think would be a great canadian duo going against one another sean spears oh okay fair you news know, airman gimmick and all that and i feel like that'd be a good Mass Didn't he just show up with Dynamite run run one week randomly and you haven't seen him again? That's I'm pretty right, much I'm everybody right. on the AEW roster, other than oh, a few wow. <laughs> like Nyla comes out of catering like once every once a month they put her on TV. Um like I, I honestly think they forget these people work there. I think they walk in the oh, back, okay. like you know, like we need somebody for Wardlow to beat up this week. It is hey, so look. true about Nyla, it's 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 not even a joke. Oh it's no, so it's hysterical. Cool. Like it's like yeah, man, it's DC you know, native, and, man. And the thing is, I like to me like Nyla could be their awesome Kong. And the 100%. fact that they, the, the fact that they yeah. don't use her, and then Ruby yeah. Soho is like the the runner up for everything in the company. Hey, we yeah. got it. We got a title. We're gonna get you to the finals. Am I gonna win it? No. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, three God. times. She's, That's she's wild. Missing. That's so true, though. <laughs> T- she's a title. loser in a tournament T- all the time. T- TBS title. She loses to Jade, who had less experience than her. Okay, we're going to put you in the Owen. You're making it to the finals. Am I winning? <laughs> no, Fritz got it. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> the next year, you're getting to the finals again. I'm winning, right? <laughs> no, nah, we're giving it to Willow. <laughs> like, she, like, 
Seriously, like well, they dropped the ball on booking her after winning that whole tournament too. <laughs> Anyone that wins that tournament, they get yeah. they get shafted. It's just that's, that's what it is. It's that's the much. thing. It's supposed to be a prestigious tournament. It's elevated nobody except nobody. for Ricky. Maybe Ricky, like he's doing maybe, all right. Maybe Ricky, but Ricky yeah. may be dancing his way out the door. <laughs> like he might be. That's true. That's true. He, he might be joining his buddy Cody at that's some true. point. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let's get back to Soul because he didn't finish yes, his list. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We got yeah. the, the tag teams as well. I want to see Edge and Christian. Obviously, I think that would just be beautiful having them together. So the two teams I want to see them against. Uh, kind of crazy one, I think, but I want to see them against Private Party. When you know, oh, Mark, about somebody's in catering. Wait. Right, <laughs> when Mark Jane's all healed up, that would be perfect there. I feel that would be very nice. And another tag team I want to see them against, I feel like it would be so good with history is Jurassic Express. You know, if they stay heel with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus and then, you know, Adam Copeland and Christian. And I, like, I, you know, I, like, I like that one. I think that could be a really, like, good storyline to lead to that match too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You pretty much, you're playing the disease right now. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, turning it like a little tomato plant. Mm. Is it the trios? And the trios, I feel like this one's kind of self explanatory but I think I just want to see instead of Ray FTR, I want to see you know Adam Copeland, Darby Sting versus Luchasaurus, Christian Cage, and Nick Wayne. I feel like that could be something for maybe Full Gear or Collision. Okay, yeah, sooner. Than, yeah. Imagine eight um um Edge with uh, sorry Adam Copeland with this thing. Paint. That's what CM Punk. Oh, yeah. I can see him doing that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> and I'll quickly <laughs> touch upon Jade as well. Jade, there's so many great things there. I want to see her against Asuka. I think that'd be amazing to see. Um, her also against Raquel Gonzalez for you know the biggest. Really? Muscle. Yeah, you know, I, I'm still not sold on Raquel. I'm sorry. I, I think there, she. I think. I think. I think she just needs to drop this baby face thing. I want to see her as a badass. She, yeah, there's one think. there's one Jade match that I want to see the most out of anything. Well, I think I think I, think I know where this one's going, but go ahead. Jade no. versus Tiffany Stratton. Oh, that's um, not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say as well, I want to see Jade and uh, Rhea Ripley in a tag team and called the Muscle Mummies. <laughs> yeah, but you need Jordan Grace for that. But... Nah, nah, you got Rhea Ripley. She's mommy, Jade's muscle. Boom, easy, done. Yeah, fair muscle enough. Muscle Mummies, I like that. Also, <laughs> mommies, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's clean. They would definitely run that. You put on a shirt. That oh, that'll that be on a shirt before the end of the night. Yeah, 100. <laughs> that'll be on WWE shop before we even. Bat Anthony, you you yeah. thought I was gonna go with the obvious that I already talked about. Her. I, I, I assume you're gonna go Bianca with that, but that's um, that's the obvious one. Yeah, yeah the, the, the Bianca is the is the you know the, the mirror opposite, but um. So are you done? Or we want to see black people fight fight each other. How's that? Cool. Cool. Sorry, my bad. Right. So carry on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to go with Edge first. Um, my number one technically is not under AEW contract right now, but maybe at some point will be Osprey. Osprey Damn, you took my one. That is one I want to yeah, I mean, I, I said this on the daily the other day. Um, ah. uh, Hangman will be another one because just the visual of him going for a buckshot lariat and Edge hit, hitting a spear on him. Because I think mm-hmm. visually, I think that'd be really cool. And Hangman could definitely throw a shot. Yeah, the, the last legend that came here had a problem, and he's no longer here or something. That, because that's what they do. They take shots. Yeah. Uh, Max is obviously – MJF and him could go with anyone. would, would yeah. be one that verbally I think would be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, for, for Jade, uh, you know, I think Charlotte is, is an obvious one. It's very similar type of – you know – Jade hasn't been wrestling that long, but she has an it factor that she is a star. Like, you see her, and she looks like a star. And, you know, the way AEW did the the video with the lightning and she has the white hair, I'm like, I could definitely see Marvel coming to them and going, we want her as Storm. Yeah. Uh, Like, I, I, there's a lot of doors that are open to her. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like it looks like WWE is running with that as well because they also said in the commentary a storm is coming. So they're still, they're yeah, still running I, with I, that. I think they're gonna mm-hmm. lean into it. They're not changing the name, which is yeah. smart. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an established name. Go with it. But I, you really need to make her dominant like she was. She's limited, so well, limited as in experience wise, not limited, limited. Mm-hmm. But uh, so it would not shock me, and I said this on on the daily. Uh, 
I almost would probably put her in NXT first for a short period of time, have her come in, have her beat Becky. Have her beat Becky for the title. You're beating a future Hall of Famer, one of the most dominant women that's ever been in this business, and have her kind of run in NXT for a little bit just to, to be under the tutelage of a Shawn Michaels and people like that that are in NXT that can kind of give her uh, special uh, training and stuff like that. You can't get anywhere else. Shawn's a goat. Like if it, no disrespect to anybody that's in training in in, in uh, AEW, Dustin Rhodes, or anything like that, but mm-hmm. they're not Shawn Michaels. Oh yeah, that's that's a whole nother animal right there. You've seen it all, done it all. <laughs> yeah, I mean he is. Yeah. So just even for a little period of time, you could bring her out for the Rumble. You could yeah. totally bring her in for the Rumble. It's in Florida. It's AEW country. Whether she stays on the main roster after that, or at least give her a taste to the audience and see um, what the reaction is, and kind of go from there. But her future is absolutely bright in WWE. There's so many Max. people to face. Bianca obviously is the, is a go to. Um, you know, Becky, Charlotte, and then whoever else they bring in. You know, there's other people they could bring in. There's people in developmental, like like Shad. You mentioned Tiffany. There and there are women in this breakout tournament on NXT too that could be something down the road that might be potential people to feud her up with. Uh, her against Asuka, I think, would be, I think that would be a lot of fun too. But she can learn so much from the women in WWE. And it, again, this is no disrespect to the women in, in AEW. They don't get as much TV time, they don't have as much exposure in this business to really learn off of she can yeah. learn a lot in wwe and they'll, yeah. they'll give her more tv time than than AEW did in the ring yeah and charlotte charlotte's a good a good safe go-to in theory because i mean she's a ring general she's going to be able to walk her through even like initially like just, i guess uh, that that's that's argue like it, it all depends on the chemistry because yeah like it's sometimes you would different with charlotte it's either you can work with her or you can't it's you can, there's no middle like the same, and you know, there's so many times where she's faced this, the person numerous times, and often, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Like any old, like any matches that she has with Oscar, like recently, they've been very, to, in my opinion, been very sloppy together. But they've had yeah. bangers in the past. Yeah. So it's it's I mean, weird. Man, with Charlotte. <laughs> it's yeah, it's really weird with Charlotte. So you know, yeah. she's wrestling Natty though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, life, death taxes, and you having a match with Natty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at somebody like EO Sky. Like, I think EO Sky against Jade would probably be really interesting because it's it's that size difference. So mm-hmm. I think it it could be very interesting. You know, the the little guy versus the big guy type dynamic that they could pursue perfectly do yeah, and if anybody's producing that and again it probably wouldn't be an nxt but it could be who knows because they said I mean, imagine, the imagine it no, nobody's in. better at that little guy big guy than Shawn michaels from his history with the undertaker so if you did that i think you, i think they could probably pull it off and and you know like you said re is a possibility selena we saw the mm-hmm. great match selena had with rhea at backlash she yeah. could probably have something Jane. like that Jay has got good chemistry with small like like yeah. I, I think one of her best matches was with her and Billy Starks. Mm-hmm. I think it was like on a dynamite. I thought they had like like really good chemistry for like two people who mm-hmm. are relatively like new within it. But like yeah, she and then obviously her and uh what's her name Red Velvet always had some pretty yeah. solid matches with each other too. Yeah. No, nah, yeah, there's um, there's a very solid choices, definitely for sure. Um, uh, the ones I I would say for for Adam Copeland, um, like I said, I was gonna say Osprey, but yeah, Anthony said it on the daily. Sorry. Um, him against <laughs> Edge, um, so Adam Copeland versus Starks, I would love to see as yeah. well. Um, that I think they, they I think Starks will go at a very good pace. Um, with 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 Edge. Um, why not also like to see him against Brian Danielson? I'm, I, mm-hmm. I know they they faced each other well during the Triple Threat. Uh, mania with reigns it, it, but I don't it, think is, they had... it is wild chaos the fact that you know rain stacked the two of them up and yeah you look, you look at the people like that roman has gone through a lot of them are no longer in the company 
Like yeah, a Cesaro, lot of them Cesaro gone. too, Cesaro's right? Cesaro's gone. KO's there. Um, you know, obviously we lost Bray. Goldberg is not there anymore. Like yeah. he's gone. Ron, Ron was gone, and then he came back. So I mean, he's a... yeah. And but now he's injured. We don't know when, when, or if he's coming back. That's that's the other one. But like, there's so many people. <laughs> Roman's gone yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, that should be his next promo or whatever. I would, I would love. It. He would. He needs to. He needs to like just make a listen. Hasn't film. he used that? Hasn't he said that before? If I'm not, no, no, maybe he may have. I don't yeah, know. I mean, There's it's, been, it's been three years for the run, but I'm sorry, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, but yeah, no. Uh, sorry again. It's been too long. Roman Reigns is champion. I'm supposed to get that shit. <laughs> Here's something I actually want to propose to you as well. Is actually that something right. that might actually impact Copeland's time with AEW. He's currently going to star in the Percy Jackson series on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, filming on that's going to take some time. If that gets a second season, I wonder how long he might be gone from AEW for next year. Just maybe a that's, so that's, that's that's a possibility. Uh, you know, there's also a possibility because AEW has a quasi working relationship. We might even see like like let's say Edge against like Josh Alexander in Impact because mm. he's never he's never gone to Impact. Christian has. He wants to go to New Japan. That's why he's, he's yeah. He mentioned Okada. He against Okada. Yeah, he Okada. Hell. Okada. That oh. is risky. Like that's that's that, that's a whole different ball game. New Japan. I don't know if well, Edge can keep up with that. He gonna need, he need to do that on AEW where they can <laughs> yeah water it down a little bit for him. Well, it's not like he's getting in the ring with Ishi or Suzuki. Um, oh god, it's that you know, oh my god, I would be terrified for his health if he had oh, that your neck. You, you almost wonder, did he leave WWE to get away from Gunther? Um <laughs> with the shops. Um but like just Jay White's another one. I know we I know none yeah. of us have mentioned it, but Jay White could be a hell of a program with him. Um, you know, I think Edge is gonna have a lot of fun because this yeah. is the first time he's off. I don't even want to say off the leash, but he's off the he's he's got free reign to kind of do things that he wasn't able to do in WWE. Um, I think that's a huge reason why Danielson went there. He was able to do stuff that he couldn't do. He wants to check off boxes before he calls it a career. Punk went there to check off it, Punk, obviously because burn bridges, but you know, he was able to check off boxes. Yeah. He's not gonna have a doll collar match in WWE. Like that's never yeah. gonna happen. And if it does. It'll be the first bloodless dog collar match of all time. <laughs> like, you know, so it, it's going to be interesting. And like I said before, for fans, this is this is a really exciting time. It definitely is, hundred and ten percent. Um, yeah, I've, you pretty much listed everything on that. I would like to see for Jay Cargill. She just needs to be eased in. I don't think she needs to be, you know, winning the Rumble or you know, no. trying to go night one for for Mania. It's way too early for that. You know, she has the potential. Just yeah, like she, she's not gonna be like the female Lesnar where she just has it immediately and then just gets shot to the moon. She, but she has the potential. But here's the be- question: Do you give her a manager? Because I did like that she had Sterling in AEW. Do you give her a manager? The thing is, she's she's good with or without one. I, I don't I, think she I, like. I don't think she, 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 she needs one. W- would they give her Robbie or whatever his name is in in, in oh, NXT? What Roger still? Yeah, right. Yeah, that that guy. Would they give? God him? no! Please don't do that to her. <laughs> no, I'm, ju- I'm just saying. Like, so if they, I'm, I'm just saying. If they get, I'm trying to think of who managers because they really don't have any these days. Yeah, what about, what like, about you know, what it ain't Heyman. So if it ain't Heyman, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. If it's not, yeah, Heyman's the only legitimate one to be honest right. with you. I, that's what I'm what saying. About, what about Sonya yeah. Deville? Is she doing anything? Dude, she's, I don't she's, even want to see, bro. She's injured. No, I don't know who's fucking there or not. She, she she became tag team champion and then she got injured it almost uh, immediately. Because that those belts are cursed. Yeah, exactly, I don't yeah. know why they insist. Hey, but, 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 you, have you seen what they do with um Alba Fire and and whatnot? They cursed them. The cursed thing. Yeah, they say that they cursed them. them. Oh yeah, they're freaking awesome. Yeah, was it Alba Fire and what's the other girl's name? Isla Dawn. I love Dawn. Dawn. Yeah, yeah. They they play the promo. Wait, so you don't like, watch it, so you knew the name. <laughs> One of them Scottish. That's why I know. Oh, okay. Ah, say no more then. <laughs> gotcha. I respect. I'm black out my Scottish people. So <laughs> yeah, they, 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 Pierce. What's, what's Pierce doing? He can't fucking run raw to shit. <laughs> um, he's basically. 
just nullifying contract signings and you know moving things when he's you, you for weeks he always says he can't do it, but and yeah. blocking me on Twitter for some odd reason. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck that guy. Know. I don't give a shit about Adam Pierce. <laughs> Not messing around. <laughs> I love it. Shad's been really? blocked by Adam Pierce and Wrestling Post has been blocked by Baron Corbin for some weird reason as well. So that is hilarious. I, I feel I feel kind of I always feel kind of privileged that I actually got the attention of a wrestler, a well-known wrestler, or whoever, like a well-known personality, and they, they block you're, you're, you're kind of just I don't even know. I, I'm gonna blocked. be real with you. I have no idea what I said to him to get blocked. <laughs> I was like, I don't think maybe I was, maybe I it probably had to be right me now. just like watching Raw and being like Adam Pierce's a horrible on-screen figure or something like that. Oh, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to block shot. I meant to block Shaq. Like, maybe got confused. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's like how I thought I got blocked by Nia Jack. Because it, it, I think Drizzy was running a, a page, and he retweeted Wrestling Republic. So I was like, oh, let me go retweet. Oh, gotcha. His, uh, I wanted to see it. And I go on the page. I was like, Adam Pierce has blocked you. I was like... <laughs> Oh wow. That's my fear sometimes when I ask someone for an interview and then it's like, oh you're blocked. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> didn't didn't they do away with the blocking? So you should be able to see it now, right? Uh I, no. I don't I don't Twitter or X, I don't do any of that crap, so oh, I don't no. know. Yeah, yeah. see? <laughs> oh you're still blocked. That is hilarious. Yeah, still is, yeah. There you go. Damn. Adam Pierce, are you watching this? You can at least just tell me what I did, man. That's all I don't what did I do? You, 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 you don't waste it. He appears on Take It to the Table and explains it to you at the table. Chaos needs the ratings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. This is an invite to you to the table, buddy. <laughs> no, but um, fair deuce. Adam, Pier- Adam Pierce officially hates uh, Shad. Anyway, yes, that's, that's, that's <laughs> I'm super enough. healed, bro. I'm super healed. Definitely, definitely. Um, while, while we're obviously on the um uh, on the uh the topic of hatred, of course, and obviously people swap um swapping one company for another, mm-hmm. there's obviously, of course, um where could this man potentially go? And you know, obviously, we were talking about CM Punk. Obviously, he uh he left um AEW under um this this left after, it, it, after fighting the son of a nine oh two one oh star. But yes, it continue. Was- it was str- it was a, it was very strained to say the least um in terms of his relations over there um to the point where of course his uh he got um prematurely terminated that's not like an assassination his contract got prematurely terminated um with <laughs> but the, but in mind it was it wasn't a, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't his friend biting another executive it wasn't a chair getting thrown it was over a windshield. Whether it or not a, it was, it wasn't glass. a hat being thrown in the air, and it was asking for Bobby Schmurder to show up. No, it was. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, that's a hip hop reference for everyone that doesn't know. Uh, but um, caught up yeah. about it a week ago. A week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Happened a few weeks ago, but uh, but yeah. So right now, as of as it stands, he's I think he's a free agent, or he basically said on um the CMMA. He's um, good for two. He, he, he he'll be free in two months, which would be, be right in time in for, for for Survivor Series, you know. And you know, whether it was seventy thousand, whether it was eighty five thousand, whether it was eighty one thousand, no one seems to know. <laughs> Saw huh? Punk's last match in AEW, and all eyes are on Chicago at Survivor Series. Because yeah. that's where most fans think if he's going to return, that's probably where it's going to be. That's where I suggested on this very program the last time that, you know, Bates will get lightheaded and fall and bang his head and has <laughs> been on the floor for months. Um, so, but, you know, that's the ideal location. And it is kind of funny where it's almost like Punk only comes out in Chicago. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. like it's it's like, safe. <laughs> it's, it's, like, you know, it's almost like he's on house arrest that his ankle monitor will only allow him to appear in the city of Chicago. <laughs> um, so, yeah. You know, that would be the ideal location for him to do it. Uh, you know, uh, whether uh, I don't think you announce it. I don't think you announce that he's going to be in Chicago. I think no matter what you do, it needs to be a surprise. That would be my guess. Uh, whether he's he comes out through the crowd, like I said, like a Scott Hall, where he just pops out of the crowd. 
maybe maybe with the bag, which would be ideal. <laughs> and, you know, and go, you know who I am. You don't know why I'm here. Whether he comes out at the end of the night um, and just almost like a Bray Wyatt type deal where, you know, you think the night's over, the champion, whether it's Seth or whether it's Roman, whoever main events, um, and the music hits and he just comes out. And maybe he just says, I'm back. Um, and then, you know, obviously all eyes would be on the next night on Raw. Like, what, what, what do you mean he's back? Like, I, part of me wants him not to come out with the music and to come out through the crowd to almost make it give the appearance of, does he even, like, we know he'll work there if he appears. But yeah, yeah. but at the same point, it would give a quasi appearance of going, wait, what, what now? So I almost would, would want him in the crowd. <laughs> Yeah. If there was for if there were any restrictions, because we don't know what's in that contract. If there's any restrictions in there, he got terminated. If there were any restrictions, I'd almost use the crowd as your own social media platform. In that you have him in the crowd and you have security escort him out because you know everyone will all grab their phones and all take the and the images will be online and the, it will be doing the work for them. But I think if the, if he comes in, he's going to be free and clear. That would be my guess. So do you do them in the crowd? Do you have them come out? If there's a War Games match, what if he's a mystery tag partner? What if he's the mystery mm-hmm. one against the Bloodline Judgment Day, whatever that is? Because nah. I, I think I think they're going to go Seth Punk for Mania. It's perfect. They're throwing the hints already. <laughs> on TV, yeah. dropping these little lines. And they don't do – WWE typically, I don't think, drops these things unless there's something yeah, this in is the perfect. works. They did yeah. it with Cody. He yes. threw the little hints. Like, WWE is not going to give you smoke if there's not some fire behind it. Mm-hmm. So I know they're – you know, we're not covering the dirt sheets, but, you know, there's obviously conflicting things with, with that whole story. I think – Honestly, I think Heyman is probably behind the scenes. Heyman's the go between. I think Heyman immediately punk contacted Heyman after everything went down. AEW went, is there any interest? And I think Heyman went to went went to Paul Levesque and said, "Hey, would you be interested in Punk?" They're a business. WWE capitalizes on controversy better than everybody else. Think, think about it. They, yeah, yeah. You you screwed over one of your biggest stars of all time on the way out the door to WCW. Who ended up on top in that thing? Vince McMahon. The Mr. McMahon character propelled them with, with the Austin feud. Brett's WCW career was a disaster. He said that himself. Mm-hmm. It's he, he wishes he never left, but he was forced mm-hmm. out the door. They made money off of that. Edge cheats on uh, with Matt Hardy's girlfriend at the time, Lita. Matt gets fired. They bring him back. They make money off of it. They've always been able to make money off of controversy. They've been able to get people that don't like each other to work together. Becky and Charlotte, the last time they faced each other, there was all the talk. There was all that backstage thing because the, the title exchange segment. Yeah. WWE knows at the end of the day how to make money, and Punk does too. If the reports are true that Punk wanted to sit down with the elite, and they said, no, nah, we're not sitting with you. We're not discussing anything with you. Well, you just threw money on the – you just wasted money on the table because if you were able to work it out, you could have done an angle on TV and made mm-hmm. money with it. Instead, you didn't, and now it might be WWE's the game. Mic drop, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I got almost to add on that. Uh, what about you, Saul? You obviously are the pretty much the biggest fan or, or formerly the biggest fan of CM Punk on this pa- of everyone on this panel. Uh, what's your thoughts on the potential possibility of uh, CM Punk um, potentially going to the other side, returning to the other side? Hey, pussy. Sorry. Whoa, right. whoa. This is a family show, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get clean, so? Oh, man. Yeah, sorry. I'll bleep that out. What's your, what's your thoughts on this? <laughs> hey, 
And first of all, Kales, did you get a particular clip I asked ready? Yeah, I got it. Uh, so my whole thing about CM Punk is, is basically I have been asked this by people I've interviewed. I've been asked this by my friends. I've been asked about some other wrestling fans. And this is how I feel about people asking me about the whole CM Punk situation. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh my god that is funny i'm sick of it i don't care i literally do not care i couldn't care if he goes to do another comic book i couldn't care if he does another movie i couldn't care if he stays home retirement and eats fucking donuts for the rest of his life he's muffins sick. it's muffins oh muffins All right. it's the same old shit it's, it's mindy's 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 muffins Mind. yeah no shit look he left such a bad taste. Like I go, I didn't see Punk's original run. I only heard like the stories and could watch the past of him. So my impression of him was him going into AW and seeing how he was, and he was for the first couple of times until he broke his foot and then came back and then had the thing with you know Hangman and Mox and then all the shit went down there. And I mean, you have to understand like he was being a he was just being a dick. He was just being a massive dick like the thing with collision like banning christopher daniels as the head of like talent relations there saying you can't come here you can't even come here to record a segment like i understand why the elite would not want to meet with someone who's got a goddamn you know complex of trying to control everything and i understand as well with the elite as well they're the evps they should take up their informal roles and you know sitting down because they are the evps i understand that but look at the end of the day punk going back to wwe is basically full-on character assassination for CM Punk. The guy who walked out and then basically said, I will never go back, I'll never go do wrestling again, came back in his AEW Rampage promo saying, leaving the place that got me sick in the first place, saying, I left professional wrestling in 2005 with Ring of Honor and now I'm back. So what's he going to do when he turns up to WWE Raw? You know, in 2014, I left sports entertainment. You know, now I'm back. He's like, all right, cool. Your pipe bombs now like age like goddamn clotted milk because it's just now all <laughs> lies and shit like that. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's like, why should like he's got a cult, you know, cult of personality, cult, cult like fans who will just throw anything that he does and all. I mean, he is a merch sailor guy at the end of the day. That that's what he is. He's just a merch sailor guy. I mean, at the end of the day, his Raw's ratings gonna go to like two million because Punk's there. I mean, look at Dynamite's ratings. I mean, it's going to show on the foot what I'm going to say right now, but they didn't, you know, go beat Raw with Punk there. Collision didn't beat the other shows when he was there. Is he going to really do the the same for WWE? No, I don't think so. I mean, he's going to go there to get his, his, you know, main event of a night four extravaganza, buy one, get one free sort of shit. (laughs) Night four? (laughs) <laughs> no, that's a quote. That's a quote that he did say to uh, MJF. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, here's the thing. Punk flat out says he is a dick. Like, like he's he said that multiple times in interviews. And I've said to people before, I am a fan of C, of the CM Punk character. I don't know Phil Brooks the person. What you hear from Phil Brooks the person, you're like, I don't know if I'd like that guy. But the CM Punk character, I've always been a fan of. Yeah. The thing is. <laughs> Him banning people, whose fault is that? That's Tony's fault for allowing this thing to blow up. Like I said the last time, it he never respected. I don't think he ever really viewed Tony as a boss, like he would view a Vince or a Triple H or even a, not, after, not after the brawl. Not not no, after but like I mean. like the way that carried on. That was okay. All right, fanboy, you, you got you have money. It's your promotion, but let let the adult talk. Like that's how that's the impression that I got when I'm watching it. Hundred percent. So when you when you don't address the problem and just go, I'm going to be able to run this company and have everybody here, and I'll make it work. When you didn't address the root crawl cause of the problem, which was the elite punk situation, everyone knew it was going to blow up. We all said that on on this show, chaos. I think I referred to it as collision is going to be the prom child program, yeah. and that's what it was. It was punks people. And the elite weren't on there. Anybody that was team elite was not on that program, was not welcome there. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a whole thing. Him going back to WWE, yeah, I understand that. You know, it's crawling back to them. But at the same point, everyone's done it. Like, there's nobody that's ever left on bad terms that hasn't. If the, Hulk I'll Hogan, there, Bruno Sammartino, Ultimate Warrior, Bret Hart. Like, Brett, come on. Brett, you know, at the end of the day, it's about making money. Yeah. WWE knows how to make money. Punk knows how to make money. That's what they want to do. They want to make money. If AEW won't take advantage of the situation and make money off of it, WWE will. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, and they'll the do lot- anything to spy AEW. They will do anything. Well, yeah. to it's, well, now it's okay. T- almost ten years have passed since I've been in WWE. Uh now his new thing that he's mad at is obviously AEW. It's you know when he went to AEW, it was an fu to WWE. Now mm-hmm. he's going back to WWE as an FU to them, going, okay, this is what you gave up. This is yeah, he, want, he wants to this, one up everything. <laughs> this is the, this is what it is. And he knows this is probably his last chance before he retires. This is going to be probably the last run. And he he always wanted that WrestleMania main event. So if he can get that in this deal, and I, I said on this show, he doesn't have to sign a multi-year deal. They could set up a contract where it's multi-year, but it's like maybe in six month mutual agreed options. So if the punk thing does blow up after six months, you just don't renew the option. He goes away and that's the end of it. You don't owe him any more money. He doesn't owe you any more time. I think he can get away with that. I don't picture him working a full-time schedule, but who the hell knows? Maybe he will. If, if he's, I wouldn't if, risk it. <laughs> I wouldn't risk it, but I, I, so fragile. <laughs> I think you could do, um, well, and I love Danhausen, but I, he's not as fragile as Danhausen. Um, no. You know, I think you can you could do stuff with him. Maybe like the Edge type deal, where he comes in, works a program, disappears for a little while. Yeah. Back. So both sides don't get sick of each other. Uh, I think the WWE locker room has more veterans in it, to the point where, okay, if you're coming in, we ain't putting up with any of this shit that you're doing. The, the, you know, the children in AEW. They don't know any better. Kevin Owens, AJ Styles. Now, AJ, I don't think he likes him at all. But, like, I think the veterans, Roman, Seth, they're not going to put up with with nonsense. And I think they're as much as, as Phil Brooks and Paul Levesque and the other executives, they might not like each other. There is a respect there. There's a respect yeah. there, and there's a desire to make money. Yeah, yeah. WWE's not going to leave money on the table. Punk doesn't want to leave money on the table. I don't know how long this run's going to be if this happens, but it's going to be memorable. He's going to make sure that the AEW run, say what you want about it, it's memorable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Shad? What about you? I want to get your two twos on this. Like, <laughs> what, what, what's your thoughts on the CM Punk sitch? So. There, so with everything in life, right, there's one person's story, another person's story, and the truth at the end of the day. And I, to what Anthony's point is, I don't know what went on behind closed doors between the elite and CM Punk, mm-hmm. you know, or how his relationship was to- with Tony Khan is and all of that. I can only watch it from afar with these press conferences and what you read about online and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, it is. You'd be a liar if you wouldn't say, just off of the track record of you know CM Punk, that he is a very uh, difficult individual to be with and work with in a locker room. And the idea of him going to WWE is definitely that more than what he is as a wrestler, and that's more the concern of it. I, if, if we're talking solely what CM Punk can bring to WWE as a professional wrestler, as a character, it's a shoe in I mean, everything writes itself. He's been gone from WWE for, what, over a decade now? It's, and, almost, it's almost 10 years. January, January will be 10 years. Yeah, it's, okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so January. So it'll be a decade. It kind of writes itself. He's been there for – he's been out for a long enough time. And, I mean, everybody kind of knows who he is, and – you know, part of it is this is a new chapter within WWE and, you know, with the merger with TKO having ties to the R. Emanuel and Dana White and UFC. It may ease out and smooth things with it 
and you may have more predominant figures over here that can kind of, you know, keep them in check. And I do agree with your point that the the relationship between him and Tony Khan, definitely Tony welcomed it as a friendship relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't. And whether it's like I always got to compare stuff to sports, right? You got a coach who's a player friendly coach. Some players are going to be receptive towards it. They're going to enjoy playing for it. And they're going to, you know, they look at that person as like a, a, a good friend compared to, you know, a coach who's like a complete, like way more disciplinary, strict. You know, people get coached different ways. And I, I think CM Punk is just so old school that that way of how Tony does stuff is not as receptive to him. And he definitely walked over it. You know, he definitely was just like, I don't respect you. You, you're not, what, what do you know? And you're, you're a fan with money. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, but that's not to knock Tony Khan. Like, no, no, absolutely. How, how Tony Khan operates it. I think he does operate it well enough for a lot of the people on the roster. You see a lot of morale at sky high. There's a lot of guys who were previously in WWE who I feel they like AWA more and they, mm-hmm. You know, past like booking and stuff, like they just enjoy the nuance of being an AW more, just how he operates his business. And that could be a point to why it didn't work out. And it can also be to a point where it's tough when you're a wrestler, but you're also a predominant like person on top because people are always going to feel, and maybe it's the same. Punk's point where he's feeling like you're going to business for yourself and benefit for yourself. So that could also be a point where he just couldn't click with the elite with Kenny Omega and all of them. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we can speculate on that. Uh, But if he was to come to WWE, I think it'd be definitely an interesting thing. Um, I think it, it, it won't have the same, you know, like when he when he debuted on AEW, that was just oh, yeah. crazy because we didn't think he was coming First back to pro in, wrestling. You know, yeah, we away. thought we thought he was done. Like he wasn't coming yeah. back to pro wrestling, so it's not gonna hit the same. But it is a good chess move because they took Edge away. You you know get back another premier former top guy, future a legend. Yeah. yeah, you get a future Hall of Famer, a legend in your own aspect. And WWE now compared to where he was last. Uh, previously, completely mm-hmm. different machine in regards to what you know, op- what you have operated within it. There's a lot more stars that have flourished from when he was there last mm-hmm. to where they are now. You know, Romans uh, and Seth are completely different people mm-hmm. from when they was in the Shield to where they are now. You know, you got Kevin Owens to your point. You got Sami Zayn. You got the Judgment Day. You got a lot of new fresh faces, um, and I mean, yeah, he's got to be real with himself. This is the last straw. If he, you know, if he does get an opportunity to come back to WWE, everything is specul- speculating on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is his last chance. Like, mm-hmm. if you blow this one, you're yeah. you're done with pro wrestling. You're not gonna be in the business. So, I have, I got, I got like, I got, I'm like fifty fifty with an excitement. I definitely would be like, oh man, this is gonna be cool. But mm-hmm. I, I do, I, I feel Soul's point where it gets tiresome <laughs> to a mm-hmm. point where. We're hearing about it a lot and a lot, yeah. and you know, Phil, just just behave, man. <laughs> I, I That's what we one, ask. The, the one thing that WWE has that AEW did, they have the Punk Whisper. They have Paul Heyman. If yeah, Paul Heyman's point. the handler behind the scenes, I think you're fine. I think mm-hmm. Paul Heyman's the type that he could smooth it. If he's handling... He's got enough pull right now, especially with yeah. what's going on. He's got, he's got enough pull. To do he's got enough thing. pull. He could probably steer that ship where he he has to... He's the one responsible for maybe producing them, maybe handling them. Yeah. Both, I, probably not on camera, but like off camera. He's mm-hmm. probably going to be the one taking responsibility for Punk, is my guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, very interesting take, guys. Uh, obviously, everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments as well. What you think of the CM Punk situation? Are you excited to to see him, or um, or are you just, you know, you, you just want him off your TV forever and ever? <laughs> leave your thoughts in the comments. Um, and just to just to wrap it off, obviously, um, let's talk about obviously the uh, 
the one of the main storylines that's going on 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 AEW. It's of course involving MJF and mm-hmm. of course Adam Cole, Bebe, or other known as, overly known as, is uh, uh, better than you, Bebe. Um, of course, uh, last week, um, uh, Adam, uh, it was a match between uh, Samoa Joe and MJF. Uh, um, the Grand Slam, mm-hmm. AW Grand Slam Dynamite uh, main event. Great match, great match. Um, and uh, near the end, uh, Adam Cole eventually showed up after he had to go and visit Roderick Strong, hashtag next strong. Um, uh, and, um, and but he came back to, to be by MJF side whilst he was on his way down to the ring. Um, he did a good old jump off the ramp and completely just bust his ankle. Yep. Um, you can see something was was not well. He was he was immediately hobbling yep. throughout the whole match in this segment. Um, and it turns out that he's completely just crushed his ankle. Um, and he requires surgery. Um, he, he requires two surgeries, apparently, he said on his Twitch t- channel. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, he's going to be out for quite some time. I know something as major as that, especially if he needs two surgeries. You're probably looking, uh, I think he said about between four to six months or two to four months, two to six mm-hmm. months. I can't remember what he said or what the time frame usually is. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, that is it's come at the worst time ever, and probably like it's, it's, it's a part of one of the biggest storylines, um, going on right now in AW. And um, and obviously he's a current ROH title holder right now. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously MGF defended the titles by himself, mm-hmm. by myself. Um, mm-hmm. at Russell Dream against Aussie Open. Um, it was a right match. It was it was what it was. Um, but now obviously everything's in limbo right now, not just because of the titles, but obviously in one of the major storylines of AEW. So my question to you guys is like, what would you like to see? Like until he comes back, um, and who do you think that if if they if he, if MJF has to choose a um, replacement partner, a temporary replacement partner, um, who would it be? Um, I'm gonna throw my hat, my 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 one out of the hat just in case someone might try and steal it. Mm-hmm. After it seems to be a lot. Um, if he had to choose a second partner, I think ideally, funny enough, I'd say I'd say the best person to summon for somebody to make it happen, Wardlow. Okay. They have history. You know, obviously they, they they can squash it just for a temporary basis. Warlock came back convincingly against poor old Griff Harrison <laughs> on Dynamite. Um, and uh yeah, I know obviously it's been bad blood and whatnot, but now that obviously MJF is on this baby face run, mm-hmm. water on the bridge, it you know, or um Warlock has a has a championship. That's what he that's what he cares about. So why not? Uh so uh, you're you are the I think the biggest AW fan out of all of us right now. So I'll give you the floor. What do you think they should do with this um this uh this this whole kerfuffle right now? And so I'm seeing it now. Um, you know, after MJF has defeated Jay White for to retain his title at Full Gear, you know, <laughs> after that we'll have a little, you know, maybe the dynamite after, or maybe even collision, have a segment of you know MJF comes in to see Adam Cole at the hospital. You know, he's in like his own little cubicle. There's a little curtain there as well, and you know, gives him like some flowers or like says that. He, pinched him off some grave while walking over or something like that because he's a scumbag. <laughs> Puts him over and he's just chatting all that. And he's like, you know, just say that like Stokely Hathaway, who's like the commissioner of Ring of Honor, you know, has said that he, you know, dedicated that he wants to want to do it, but now he has to find a tag party. He has to rel- relinquish the titles. You know, he's thinking what to do, what to do. Adam's like, you know, you need to find somebody. You need to find somebody. He's like, well, who do I find? And all you hear is just, Adam! <laughs> you know, strong, right in the wheels then. He's like, Adam! I'm I'm finally getting discharged. My neck is my neck is strong. It's strong. And he's like, well, good on you, good on you, Roddy. But you know, you're my friend, right? And he's like, yeah, I'll do anything for you. I, I need you to defend my Ring of Honor title with MJF. And they just start bickering. They're like, no, I'm not teaming up with him. Fuck him. He's shit. He was the weakest member of the era. He's a dickhead. Screw that. He's doing any of this shit. And I was like, no, guys, you're my friend. You'll work together. For friendship and it's like a it's like a bitter friendship and it's like we're doing this for adam and you know trying to build it all up and then when adam's all healed up you do a angle later down the line where they're defending the ring of our titles and you know they have a successful defense him and roddy they come a bit of friend and the mass demon guy comes in just standing at the ringside you know it's like oh, oh yeah there and then jumps down and then it's revealed that the mass members are Adam Cole, the Kingdom, and Roderick Strong, and that's who has been in the background. And that leads to 
you know, sort of do something like with what John Moxley and Seth Rollins did with like when they had the raw the raw titles and Moxley turned yeah. heel, that kind of situation with the Ring of Honor titles, and then you get Adam Cole versus MGF for the AW Championship, and if MGF doesn't resign, you have Adam Cole take it, make that whole storyline has a good bow on it. And then you have a heel, Adam Cole, could do some stuff there. And if Adam Cole cannot heal up and you need to unveil who the demon is, the best way I could do it with four people there, make it LA5, you know, LA5, Vandrade, Vance, Jarlistico, and Roosh. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Because they have, you know, they have history with Jay White and uh, Bullet Club Gold, so I think that makes a sense there. So that's who... Right. Right, right, right. Fair dues, fair dues. Yeah, I, I still haven't made my mind up who the hell that was. Um, I remember someone said it was for some reason Britt Baker, apparently on online. I was like, what the hell? Why, what? Yeah, he has to stay home again for fuck's sake. Just, just filling in for Adam because of the injured for for Adam, is, that, yeah. is that the justification for it? something like that? Probably, <laughs> yeah. Um, what about you, Shad? What's your thoughts on this? Um, on this, uh, this whole situation, and uh, who do you think should, should be his replacement partner? Yeah, I mean. It, it it sucks, man. Like that that guy got a tough break when it comes to injuries, man. Like, and it always happens at a very like pivotal time when he's doing something really good in regards to booking. Like, I was at the first match when they had the uh, when it went past the time in the dynamite um uh, in mm. DC in June, and to see that from like what it was that match to where we are. In this storyline now, it, it definitely sucks. But I mean, you definitely got to keep him on television within this feud or, or within this storyline with uh, MJF. Man, I don't know the person I would pick. I don't know if his health, if he's healthy or he's cleared. But I would love to see a returning Kyle O'Reilly be oh, yeah. maybe that mass person and him kind of teaming with uh, MJF during this whole little run. I think. It, you instantly put him in position on a prime thing. He's got history, obviously, in Ring of Honor, being a former tag champ. Obviously, his tag partner is not there anymore. And then, of course, you got him in ties with Adam Cole from the Undisputed uh, days. I, I feel like that'd be a pretty cool shout. And uh, but obviously, that all goes upon with his health. I don't know where his yeah when his return date, but yeah. it's kind of been a little bit under the radar. I feel like they might be cooking something up. So. I'm gonna go with Kyle O'Reilly. That was a good. Sh- when you think about it, the build of that person, he does did have like a slimish build, like how Kyle O'Reilly is. Um, if that was him, or obviously he could obviously just be a fill-in. But um, but that's a good shot, Kyle O'Reilly. I'm not sure I'm not fussed with that one. Well, uh, so what about elimination? You're gonna say Bobby Fish? Oh, for fuck. I mean, where's the lie? I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> Moving <afraid>. on. <laughs> What about you, Anthony? What's your what's your All thought? Right. Well, with the Brochacho being injured, um, here's the thing: we don't know how long he's going to be out. There's that possibility uh, that MJF may leave before Adam gets healed if he hasn't mm-hmm. signed a new contract. But uh, if he defends it himself with obviously MJF's best friend, which is this himself, uh, that doesn't help the tag division. If he single-handedly defends the title himself successfully multiple times, what's that say about your tag division? Which yeah. really is non-existent anyway. If he's able to single-handedly, I know he's your world champion, but he shouldn't be beating two on ones every time. The person, that's why I didn't like. That's why I didn't like that match. At the yeah, I, 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 so. <laughs> I had a problem with that because that, that does nothing for the righteous. Like literally, your only established tag team uh, under Ring of Honor umbrella. To me, the person I would bring in to be his tag partner is technically not in the company yet. It'd be Richard Holiday. They have history in MLW as a faction. Uh, so I think that could work where, you know, it's believable. He does have history there with Richard Holiday. If, if, assuming you're keeping the belt on MJF. And then you could ultimately down the road if you keep him there, Richard doesn't want to give up the belt when Adam comes back. If Adam comes back, mm. then do you do Roddy and uh, and Adam Cole against – like, are you going to build rival factions there? Because MJF could build a rival faction with people. The one that works. <laughs> yeah. You know, one that – you know, not the firm, but like – I mean, there were pieces of the firm that could have worked. They just completely shit the bed on that. 
Yeah. Um, like, I don't understand that. You use them to get your thing, but you don't use them to get your belt, to get the yeah. actual title. You're like, no, nah, I don't need your services. I'm sorry, did you get the title? No, you just got the <laughs> chance for it. I'm confused. Like, from a storyline, that never made any sense to me. I think the group that attacked Jay White, I know everyone thinks it's it, – it, I think – the reason the person's wearing the mask, the, the devil mask, is to frame um, Max. Because no one's going to believe him. When yeah. Max goes, it wasn't me, I wasn't involved, no one's going to believe you. You're everyone's favorite scumbag, but you're still yeah. a scumbag. That's the whole gimmick. So, so no one's yeah. going to believe you. are going, I didn't attack you. It was your mask. No one else has worn it. It ain't punk. <laughs> like, so, like, you know, to bring this full circle. So, I mean, whether it's Undisputed Kingdom, whether it's that combination, whether it's maybe ex WWE guys, it's ultimately going to be. Could it be Dolph? Could it be? The, could it be like a group of people? It's possible. But like, whatever you do, don't have Max keep in defending the title single handedly. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't yeah. make any sense why you're beating tag teams. Yeah, yeah. I just remember, like, uh, I just feel like anytime that um everyone thinks that it's MJF behind that um behind that mask, he's just he should just basically do a a rendition of this. MCR match. Accusations. These are not accusations. This is false accusation. And that's awesome. <laughs> uh, is it, I'm so glad that didn't take take twenty two to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, poor poor Keith, poor Keith. I love Keith. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, it was just, yeah, absolutely crazy. But um, but fair dues, fair dues. Um, yeah, it could go either way. I, I agree that he shouldn't just always single handedly um defend those titles, or if anything, like if needs be, just relinquish them and then get them back again or something. I don't know, but yeah. I just hope that you know the the momentum doesn't leave from this because of this injury. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know they need to think of something. Um, but yeah, like I said, I guess they haven't really shit the bed yet. Because of this, no, this, this isn't a retro, this isn't AEW's retribution, but let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless them, RIP retribution, yeah, definitely. Yeah, anyway, um, I'll, 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 with that note, oh, we have oh, come oh, to... although, although the mask guy could be Mustafa, <laughs> no, fuck off. <laughs> I would like it. I, I'm a big yeah, Mustafa. Ali. They think it'd be re- retribution done right. Uh, he's got a nine. He's got a ninety day though, right? I know, but they, if he's if he's just a placeholder, if, they, if whoever was in the suit was just a placeholder, I'm just saying. Nah, fuck it, Anthony. Make it Odyssey Jones. Oh my God! On that note, <laughs> all right. There's a there there's a there's a realm of believability. Quincy and Odyssey are not believable body doubles for for that to work. So it's it's Omos. It's, it's clearly go- Omos. <laughs> no, the the Daba Kato, whatever the hell, the, the other one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just had he just had a he didn't have Daba a growth spurt. He just lessened in height. Definitely, yeah, yeah definitely. Flip it, oh. it's, 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 Honey, really I shrunk the kids small. on him. <laughs> He's really not that big. It's where the camera is. It's the angle. <laughs> oh, it's all about the camera. Yeah, yeah, it's all definitely. About the camera. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Actually, yeah. As soon as you say David Cato, I should have said this. Who? 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 Oh, the man at WrestleMania that was electing popes both nights. <laughs> The most That's ginger, the the best most frog ginger splash people, in the world. The, the oh, most man. ginger elbow, the most ginger people's elbow of all time. That's one way of putting it. Ginger. The, the ropes didn't even move. They didn't move. <laughs> I'm oh, surprised gosh. he didn't catapult into the crowd. The guy's such a like. He's, he weighs 20 pounds. It's crazy. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Love you, Uncle Snoop. Love you. All right, cool. On that note, we have come to the end of the episode. I told you it was it was jam packed. We had so much to unpack here. Um, and but yeah, it's been awesome having you guys. Of course, thank you very much, Anthony. Thank, thank you very much, man. Soul. Anytime. Thank you very much, Shad, for your on your take it to the table debut. I hope you yes, enjoyed sir. it. Congratulations, Shad. <laughs> you popped your cherry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be back whenever y'all have me, man. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're, um, you're, 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 you're right in the middle. You're not as controversial as Ignacio, but you know, you, you, you like, you, you, you're, you're on point with your takes. I like it. You're, you're welcome here anytime. Appreciate okay? it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, as I said, yeah, make sure you like, share, subscribe before you leave this video. I hope you had a good time. 
Other than that, I have been your host, Chaos. He has been Anthony. Down there is not so broken soul this time. He's all right. And well, well, Chaos, okay, just the way because I'll bring the Afro back, and that's when we'll have the fun. Well, I can see you're, you're, you're bringing it back. Also, also quickly, yeah, Um, is there any announcements about the Soul Sessions coming up soon? Uh? Oh, yeah. Um, there's one going to be coming up, which is a new deathmatch promotion starting up in Scotland. Uh, they're having their first show in November, Bleeding Gums Wrestling. I also have... Wow! Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Bleeding I Gums of- Wrestling? Bleeding Gums Wrestling. That is incredible. I'm going to have to watch what if they so, produce. So would that be That's the BGW? best wrestling promotion name is I've heard in my life. <laughs> Maybe four take up a pillow. Yeah, I, I want to see what the belt looks like. Yeah. Well, if, well, you watch the interview. You might find out what... Uh, hardcore title sort of things they were inspired by to maybe make a belt. So you know, maybe W, maybe WCW, maybe ECW, or maybe they, it was some. They got a higher Brit. She's the but, commissioner. Is that where you're going with this? Yeah. Oh, God, Matches are in our dental practice. <laughs> I will we're give also in the parking exclusive. lot of the, in the doctor's office. <laughs> Oh uh, god, and I'll give an exclusive for a future episode is with a woman who has become an inaugural champion here in the UK, Ronnie Knox. Uh, she talks about becoming an inaugural champion and um, being a woman of colour, how that feels such a great representation for the local community and you know kids that look up to her as well as an idol. So that will come out on his later day as well, many others as well. Um, you know, I'll make the announcement here as well. Um, when I get to episode 100 of the Soul Sessions, if I do this year or next year, I will be taking some time off. Oh. Um, not not permanently, I don't think, but um, I will be taking some time away. Uh, and if I, when I do come back, it will more likely than be the start of season four. So that will be an interesting way to go in. So I can just hold this up all the time and explain things. So future might look bright. But see what happens, eh? Wow. Okay. The, the, only thing, the only thing I could think of when you said Bleeding Gums, I don't know why, my mind immediately went to the name Bleeding Gums Murphy. And I'm like, I knew you were going to say that. I why does that know. name look? I literally go, I was like, that's right. It was a saxophone player on The Simpsons. Yeah, it was Lisa's yeah. favorite guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bleeding Gums Murphy, yeah. Awesome saxophone player, though. Yeah. Um, you should see their logo. Their logo is fun. Is it bleeding? <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. But yeah, no, we have, that's um, that's that's pretty cool, man. So yeah, uh, make sure you go and check out that out as well on the Soul Sessions on uh, on YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe on that. Got awesome interviews there. Um, which what, what episode are you on now? Is, uh, is that... so bleeding gum wrestling will be I think eighty five tomorrow. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so make sure you go and see that as well as the previous eighty four interviews as well, please. Mm-hmm. Very much appreciated and uh yeah so like i said this has been take it to the table until next time guys peace don't fall off the chair don't fall off the chair don't fall off the chair (laughs) if you fall go the other way